Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I'm going to show how I made this autumn-themed layout in my art journal. I'm not really a big seasonal person. I just make what I want when and as and when. But I don't know. I have just been craving figs and, and squash and such. So this morning I woke up and I just thought, I am going to make that autumn-themed art journal page. Unlike my altered books, my art journal pages are very, very freeform, using found papers from magazines and coffee table books and just what's in the box, in the scrap box. So please join me and I'm going to start with just these, a blank page like this and build it up layer by layer. I'm going to talk about collage and some mixed media techniques uh, and some mess making. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make a page. My first layer is going to be this handwritten uh, paper. It's from 1822, and it's an old French legal document. Uh, it is a little startling, perhaps, to cut up something this old, but I want you to see something. This had a lot of damage when, it, when I found it, and... And it was ripped and torn, and I just feel like that gives me the permission, the duty, to turn it into something beautiful that can still be used and cared for. Now, if you do not have handwritten paper, no worries. You know what you can use that really will be a strong background? It's just plain old text. You can go to the thrift store, the charity shop, or a yard sale, and just get an, some old text. If you want to age it, you can tea dye it and uh, distress it a little bit. You know, it works really well if you have any old dictionary pages. And you can size those to your sketchbook. Sheet music also works really well. And, if you like, I have printable versions of handwritten French papers from the 1800s. They are high res. They're on my website, and they're free. So, please go get them. There's a link to those in the text box underneath this video. I'm going to go glue this down. Before I start lo looking at images, I have gone round all of the edges and inked them up using a, an ink pad and a blending tool. You can also use a makeup sponge. It does the same job. It's not essential to ink up the edges, and this was already pretty um, aged. It really didn't need it, but there were some little bites that didn't quite meet up there, and I just thought if I ink up the edges, that will kind of disguise that a little bit. But it is by no means essential. I want to say that normally if I was making, say, an altered book, see how there's this ledge here in the center where the spine is. It's not, I'm so far along in the book and it's so chunky that it's not lying flat. I would be very wary of trying to pull another piece of paper over the spine in an altered book. But in my art journal, I can do anything I want. So I have just split that and took a chance. It looks okay. The images that I'm going to be showing today are, a, there's a lot of them, and some are just from my scrap pack. Things that I've got kicking around from old projects that I've torn and, and used in other things. They're not precious. Some of them are old, but some of them are printed or reproductions, 
or they're just old fodder. So it does not have to be precious. I am going to be looking at, I do have quite a few women and, and young women that I've cut out. I just have a box. I have a box of butterflies, a box of birds, a box of um, angels, and I have a box of old-timey women. And I just cut these up whenever I'm on the phone or, or chit-chatting. And some of these already have these autumn colors that I'm going to be working with today, I hope. And you can see, again, these are not anything old or precious. They came from coffee table books. Uh, this came from a free brochure. So just teach yourself to look for some of those in the wild. And what I'm just going to do is cycle through some of these pieces and talk about some collage ideas, some placement basics to help explain why some things work better than others. Maybe. One thing that I am pretty sure of is that I'm going to be using one of these two images. I've been saving these up for a fall, for an autumn layout. These are purple plums and these are figs. I haven't cut all the white bits off yet because those um, stems are pretty fragile and I don't want to go in there until I'm ready. Now, I do like how the, the figs work with this color, this palette. I want to be careful, though, that I don't, you know, if I, would, if I was to put them this way, I would be covering up a lot of valuable uh, real estate there. So I want to make sure that wherever they end up, it's going to let as much of that stamping and script show as possible. We can, of course, go over here, and actually that does look pretty strong, and that would anchor this side of the page. I like that already. But I also had my heart set on some plum colors, some uh, purple eggplant colors, aubergine we say here, and that's also very strong. And it's small enough that it could go vertically. Ooh, that would be good. Would be off and running with that. I'm going with the fig and the plum will be showing up in an art journal page coming soon. Let's look at focal points. Now, I like this a lot, but she has daisies in her hat and uh, I'm looking for something a little more autumnal. And the same thing there. That's pretty, but uh, brides are all juney. Well, not all, but let's see. I have, I have this this lady, and again, she's just from a a magazine. And I love the colors that are going together here. All of those fig colors are in this, but we would definitely need some more background. So maybe. The colors are right here, and she definitely has an autumnal feel, but um, they're just not, they don't really, um, it's not, it's not talking to me. Let's see. Now, here's one, and she's from an old-timey, you know, magazine. And I love this. I think this is astonishing. The way that she's, she, she's lovely, and she's looking longingly at this. And it's, it's going into her gazes, looking into um, the center of the layout. This is moving into the center of the layout, making the viewer's eye see one canvas, not page, page. 
that's very strong. But I would lose, I would have to lose a lot of uh, the pretty shawl here, the blouse. Now here's, here's one again from just a magazine. And that is very tempting. The size is right. You've got these autumnal colors and then the rust in her gown picks up the rust here. And I am very tempted. It's also going to leave a lot of room for doing some mark making and stencils and stuff. So that's a definitely may maybe. Here, composition-wise, this is strong. Again, her gaze is going in, the colors are right, but uh, there's something just a little too austere. Uh, and, uh, no. I am crazy about this. Again, you've got the rust colors here and here, and she's facing out, but gazing in, which actually actually creates movement and engagement at the same time. Where's that butterfly? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then finally, I have this. And this is one that I've been saving for a long time. It's just a nice size. Again, you've got the movement. Very pretty. And that would be, that would be good, but not great. So I think great is going to be... I was actually tempted with this. Um, probably would not put this in an altered book. But I think it's good fun. You got the colors. You got you some whimsy. You could have it with this lady. Look, it's an old-timey cat fight. Or maybe they're dancing. All right, so... Actually, that is tempting. Just because it's, it's fun. I'll be back. Before I commit, I want to show you what happens when you move your elements from one position to another, because sometimes just simply turning something, tilting it a little bit will change the narrative, the visual feel. And so before I glue things down, I always like to see what they look like in another context. So I'm switching them around. And I don't want to move her over the stamp. So it, it, it's funny because now it still feels really good and sound, but she seems more independent. And I like that. And again, there's still plenty of room for mark making. And this lady, now the movement has changed because the gaze is going out of the page to something that we can't see, but her posture is turned in, side, facing the plant. So it's a completely different kind of movement. I went ahead and cut out the white bits on the, the fig plant here and trimmed it. Um, if you would like to see a lesson here, a tutorial here on YouTube about fussy cutting, there's a link to one beneath this video, Fussy Cutting 101. And um, now that we have our focal points, I want to think about some background pieces. 
Now, this is sort of a dictionary small with a, a ladybird. And I like that. I like the contrasting text uh, that has kind of a fall feel. Yeah, I know they're in the spring, but squint and work with me here. Here's a fragment from an old piece, a project that I was working on where I just rough tore that diagonally. And I do like how that anchors the page and fills it up. It's not wrong. I have a bird, of course I do, a goldfinch, and I was kind of thinking about that. And I, I like it. I do like it. Um, except see how it's changed. Just something about just adding this guy, which should be whimsical, but now her gaze is much more severe. She's not having it. So bye until the next project, little bird. I have another bird here. This is, I, I think, is, is that a tree creeper? Any, any bird friends want to weigh in and help me? I think it's a tree creeper. And uh, I like that. I like how the black and white engraving aspect picks up some of the ink here. I have this butterfly that, again, is just from a gardening magazine. And that's tempting. It's actually almost too much, but I have a feeling that once it's glued down, it's going to look like one thing, and that one thing will be very cool. I also have these bird's eggs. Um, these are some that I made myself using watercolor on text, and I then just cut them out so now they could be used as some fun embellishment. If you'd like to see that video on how to make bird's eggs with watercolor, super easy, super pretty, I also have a link to that video. I like this a lot. And off camera, you don't know this, but off camera for about the last 40 minutes, I've been agonizing over whether something should go over here. It's already very strong. And I think maybe if this was an altered book layout, I would stop there. But the art journals, I like them to be more whimsical and uh, built up. And I have another butterfly. So I thought... Now that looks good, except you're losing a lot of the figginess there. And uh, that also looks good, but it's, again, you know, moving into the... I don't want it on the figs. So... I've talked a lot about how I didn't want to cover up this beautiful script and the stamp. But I have to say that after putting this down and picking it up about 70,000 times, I think it's worth it. I think one thing it's doing here is it's balancing. This page is is lovely, but it's it's got a lot going on. It's heavier. This helps balance out and anchor this side of the layout. And I think on balance, it's it's worth it. So I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to add a little embellishment. Starting with, uh, these are Derwent XL Graphite Chunky Sticks. And I'm crazy about these. I use them a lot. They are water-soluble, but today I'm going to just use them uh, smudging. Smudging. Um... Here, the branch did not quite 
fill up that space. So I've just penciled in a little bit with that gray, silver gray. I'm going to pull that down. It's not meant to be convincing. It's meant to suggest a branch that's going down to the bottom of the, the page. So here, I'm going to give her a little bit of a shadow. And as I say, these sticks smudge really, really well. So I'm just... I'm not going to do the wing just here. Okay. So you can see it's, I've just colored it in very messy, but now when I smudge and you can, of course, use a blending tool, but I, I get a better smudge this way myself. So I'm just smudging that and pulling it out a little bit. And that's adding some texture and layer to this page. And like I said, a little bit of a, a, a maroon colored fog there. And who doesn't like a maroon colored fog? I liked that so much that I did the same over here with the pears. And as you can see, it's not consistent. I mean, if I was making a painting, I would want the shadow to be on one side or the other. But this isn't meant to be a shadow so much as just a little, uh, I don't know, element. to add some texture and layer and color to the paper. Now, the last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit more mark making and I'm gonna use some soft pastels. These are Daler, Daler Rowney, Rowney, and it's called the Warm Selection. And I, you can see I use these a lot. They put up with a lot, and I just love this palette so much, especially for this time of year. This stencil is, it's Tim Holtz, and I'm not sure what it's called. I kind of think it's burlap or something, burlap in the burlap family. family. And what I'm going to do is I've got a mister, a mini mister, a spritzer here with some clean water. And I'm just going to go to a couple of these empty spots and put my put my stencil down let's see yeah that's better and now I'm just gonna take my spritzer and lightly just a couple of spritz of water there through the stencil to dampen the page underneath I don't want it to get wet or soggy just damp and now I've colored the stencils in over, I'm sorry, the pastels in over, but to really get them to pick up the pattern, you have to work them in. And now I've done that, and this is how it, it looks. It's actually uh, almost like a modeling paste. It's got a little bit of a 3D effect to it there. So that's gonna add texture and pick up these rusty garnet colors throughout. And I'm going to go to here. Less is more with this. You can always go back and add more later. And you know what? I'm going to contrast and instead of going back with that, I'm going to go with this brick color. So you'll have the same pattern but with a slightly complementing contrasting color. Yes, that smudge year, and I am here for it. I want to do the same on this page for some balance. So I thought about here. There's some space here, but I don't want it to be too matchy-matchy. 
too symmetrical. It's not that kind of page. And you know what I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to go back in here and add a little bit more of that shadow, which will start to fill up that space a little bit. And then go down here with just a teeny bit more of that, that smudge. Yep. That's it. I'm very happy with how this autumn themed art journal page turned out. I'll probably keep working on it. Oh, forever. I, I kind of do. I just go back and see things I could add and mess around with. It's the nature of the art journal page. Please uh, stay tuned because in a few days I've got that pep talk coming up. I also have a look at what's new here in the studios some of the things that I brought back from France last month. I'm also going to be making echo prints with autumn leaves uh, soon, so please be sure and turn on the notifications, and then you're going to find out when that goes up. If you have any feedback, any questions, please let me know in the comments below. YouTube will like me better if you do, and we can compare notes. Again, check out the text below this video if you want the links to these printable scans of handwritten paper. And until later, happy making.